You know, late last year, the U.S. Department of Energy chose the Pacific Northwest to be a hub for something called hydrogen energy. It's part of an effort to create more clean energy getting away from fossil fuels. I remember back then it sounded kind of futuristic and maybe a little bit fuzzy on the details, but now we know more, so let's do a deep dive to get an update. Up to a billion dollars of federal money is going to be spent creating hydrogen plants at sites across Oregon and Washington, and in the end, they're expected to create 10,000 new jobs. But as you might expect, not everyone's on board the, for these so-called hydrogen hubs, and that is our big story tonight. The power grid in the Northwest is being stretched almost to its breaking point. We've not had rolling blackouts yet, thankfully, but we have come close a few times, and our power consumption it's only going up. Here's what energy leaders predicted for the near future during a summit in Seattle earlier this summer. The 2024 update to the Northwest Regional Forecast projects demand could increase by 30% in the next 10 years. That's an increase of 7,000 average megawatts or enough electricity to power seven cities the size of the city we are in today, Seattle. Uh, yeah, so that's a lot and that's a problem. And yes, by the way, her name actually is Crystal Ball, for those of you wondering. But there were a couple of potential solutions highlighted at that summit, and one of them was green hydrogen. Now, hydrogen, if you remember from your high school chemistry class, is the most abundant element in the universe, the first element on the periodic table. It's naturally found in things like the sun, but it's also part of what makes up water. It's the H in H2O. Green hydrogen is created through using renewable energy. The process is called electrolysis. It uses electricity to separate the hydrogen and oxygen in the water molecules. Then the hydrogen can be used for other types of energy, like fuel for big trucks. There are different grades of hydrogen energy broken down into different colors of hydrogen. Tonight, we're gonna to focus on green hydrogen, since that's what is gonna be made here in the Northwest. Earlier this month, one of the first steps, the Pacific Northwest Hydrogen Association was awarded phase one status to start working on the plants in our region. They're getting an initial $27.5 million to get started. And right now, getting started mostly means the bureaucratic side of things, you know, getting permits, drawing up the plans, getting input from stakeholders, that sort of thing. And we know now where they're planning to build. Three of the planned Pacific Northwest locations are in Oregon, two are in Boardman, which is out in Morrow County along I-84 in Eastern Oregon. One is in Baker City and one is in Montana. The four were planned, four additional were planned in Washington in Ferndale, Richland, Chehalis and Centralia. But the company that was planning to run the Centralia site, they pulled out earlier this month over tax credit issues. Each site will work on some aspect of the production, storage and delivery of that green hydrogen once they're all up and running. Which, by the way, is way out. It's not even clear when they're expected to be up and running. But the feds do say it will play a key role in the government's running on 100% green energy by the year 2050. So sort of around the corner. We talked with Janine Benner, the director of the Oregon Department of Energy, about those hydrogen hubs in Oregon and why Boardman in particular. But is a pretty industrialized site, and the project is on the grounds of a former coal plant, actually Oregon's final coal plant that closed in 2020. And so PGE, the owner of that coal plant, uh, working with Mitsubishi um, and Williams uh, Pipeline, have created uh, a project that will be a facility that will use clean electricity to generate hydrogen via an electrolyzer and then store and use that hydrogen to create clean electricity when wind and solar aren't available. Other sites were chosen because they are close to ID4 and because the companies that will run those plants gave the fastest timelines to get them up and running. Not everyone thinks building new hydrogen plants is a good idea though. There are a lot of concerns out there. One of them is that producing hydrogen isn't all that efficient. Here's Abby Ramanan from the nonprofit Clean Energy Group. And electrolysis um, is very, very energy intensive and it's also very inefficient. So, I mean, if you think about it, you're taking renewable energy that you could just be plugging directly into the grid um, and you're taking that energy and you're transforming it into a fuel, which then needs to be either run through a fuel cell or combusted to produce energy again. So you're kind of getting these multiple conversions 
And because of those multiple conversions, you're, um, the process is very inefficient. And most electrolyzers only have a round trip efficiency of 30 to 40%, which means you're losing 60 to 70% of the renewable energy that you're putting in. Huh, that's an interesting fact, don't you think? Chris Green with the Pacific Northwest Hydrogen Association says, yes, that is true, but the plan is to mostly use hydrogen for fuel, not for electricity. Um, if, if the only thing hydrogen was being used for was to take electricity, run it through an electrolyzer, create hydrogen, and then use that hydrogen to burn in a turbine to turn back into electricity. If that's the only thing it was used for, that would not, the economics of that, of, of the energy utilization wouldn't be very good. It's a round trip loser. And so for, if you isolate it in that sense, then yeah, it, it, but that's the reason that that's not what we're proposing. Um, we have proposed for this energy to be used uh, as a fuel in most cases. So heavy duty transportation and buses and trucks and planes and boats and those kinds of things. That's general in general, where we think most of the offtake is going to come in the near term. Um, so there's, it is, it is an important thing I would say to raise. Uh, and we do think about using hydrogen, uh, you know, when, in those peak moments uh, when we uh, really need a little bit of extra electricity to keep the lights on the places we, we want to make sure that our grid is sustainable and doesn't, you know, endure brownouts or blackouts or those kind of, the kinds of things in the future. So at peak moments where there's peak demand, uh, having that opportunity to use hydrogen to create some electricity is better than a natural gas turbine or, or using diesel backup generation in places. Another concern is safety. This is video from North Carolina in 2020 when an explosion at a hydrogen plant damaged about 60 homes. One of the homes was uninhabitable after the explosion. Fortunately, no one was hurt or killed, but opponents argue hydrogen does come with big risks. Hydrogen um, is a very volatile molecule and it's very small and leak prone. So then you run into several issues with transporting it through pipelines. Um, first of all, you can't transport hydrogen through any sort of steel pipeline because it will um, diffuse through the, the alloy, the steel alloy, create a ton of cracks, and then you get explosions uh, in those cracks. So you need to be very careful about the material that those pipelines are made out of. In addition, because the molecule is so small um, and it's very prone to leakage, and we don't currently have any equipment that's sensitive enough to capture those leaks um, before they get to an explosion level event. And the reason we talk about explosions with hydrogen so often is um, hydrogen is a very explosive um, molecule. Uh, it is four, it burns four times as hot as natural gas. Um, if anyone's familiar with the Hindenburg disaster, that's a great example um, where, you know, it was a, a hydrogen blimp that exploded. Um, and that is part of the reason hydrogen explosions are so dangerous is because it burns so hot. Um, it's much harder to put that out effectively. So in addition to being concerned about the leaks just from the, um, the secondary greenhouse gas effect you get when that hydrogen is leaking to the atmosphere, we are also concerned about how well those leaks are being monitored from the sake of the community and whether, for example, local um, fire, uh, firefighters are being trained on how to fight hydrogen fires. All right, so lots of concerns. Folks with the Pacific Northwest Hydrogen Hub say, of course, safety is a priority and a requirement with their federal funding. But the last big concern we'll address tonight is water usage. Remember, in that electrolysis process, H2O, water mo molecules are broken down to extract the hydrogen. That means you need a lot of water. It's roughly about you need nine tons of water to produce one ton of hydrogen. So if you think about that in terms of the scale of hydrogen production that these hubs are suggesting, we're talking about a ton of water usage. When you uh, run water through an electrolyzer and you break apart those molecules, you can't recycle any of that water because it has been broken down on a molecular level. So that nine tons of water that you put in, you won't get any of that back. And that's nine tons of purified water. Um, electrolyzers are very, very sensitive. So you can't just run um, wastewater through them. Okay, interesting thoughts. The response to that concern from hydrogen advocates is that these sites won't use any more water than any other energy projects like coal or nuclear, which apparently use about three Olympic sized swimming pools a day. And in the end, they say the energy needs to come from somewhere. 
it's very important for all the reasons that we need, not just for hydrogen, that everybody keeps thinking about and keeps talking about the need to bring on more renewable generation assets throughout the region. We're going to need these because of all the decarbonization policies we've already implemented. We want to charge all of our cars. We want to get rid of gasoline cars. We, we need data centers to store things and, and focus on cybersecurity issues that we have. So we're going to need more clean electricity as a region even if you don't have hydrogen. hydrogen. Hydrogen is a very small portion of the overall uh, energy utilization portfolio, even as we project it out over the next 20 and 30 years. All right, we're just scratching the surface now when it comes to these hydrogen hubs. There's still a lot to talk about. For instance, if you're creating 10,000 jobs, do those people have enough places to live and to go to school and hospitals and on and on and on? And do people already living in these areas want these plants coming in? Lots of questions. Now we want to know what you think. If you live in Boardman or Baker City especially, please, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you think about these developments. And for the rest of you, are you convinced that up to $1 billion from the feds is worth it to build these hydrogen hubs? Would you rather that money go to other green energy sources? Email us, will you? The address is thestory at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail. The number is 503-226-5090.